Hey guys, welcome back to Medicine Deconstructed. I'm your host, Dr. Jay Rutland. I really appreciate you guys being here today. Again, if you wanna subscribe, please hit the subscribe button, hit that notification button so you know about our episodes being published every Tuesday. The hottest topic on the planet right now is vaccines and SARS-CoV-2. Should you get the vaccine? Does the vaccine work? How does the vaccine work? You guys are gonna find out all of that and more on today's episode. All right, so what is a vaccine and how does it work? A vaccine essentially creates an immune response. So that way you develop cells that not only make antibodies, but T cells that also can recognize a cell that's infected and recognize a certain pathogen and get rid of that pathogen. Essentially what happens is cells will recognize a foreign protein and what they'll do is they'll engulf this foreign protein and they'll turn it into a certain receptor any cell has what's called the MHC1 complex. And the MHC1 complex basically goes to the cell membrane and flags out a piece of that protein that the T cells are gonna recognize and attack. That's how the immune system works and that's how we generate immunity. We understand the structure of SARS coronavirus. We understand that this is a single stranded positive sense RNA virus that has certain proteins on its membrane. Those proteins which you've heard about are spike protein, membranous protein, nucleocapsid protein, and an envelope type of protein. The way that our body fights it, as I've mentioned before, is by generating not only antibodies towards these proteins, but a T cell type of reaction that recognizes these proteins and essentially neutralizes and kills the virus. The two different types of procedures that are being generated and studied right now are an mRNA vaccine, and adenovirus vector vaccines. Now you're looking at me and you're like, adenovirus, isn't that a virus? Yes, it is. But here's how that works. You're basically going to sequence whatever type of genome that virus delivers. And you're gonna use that virus to generate a certain type of protein that you want the immune response to be directed against. When you look at AstraZeneca's adenovirus vector, which is the one that is currently moving into phase three as we speak. What it is, is it's an adenovirus that can't replicate, but it contains DNA that can be delivered to our immune cells. Once it's delivered to our immune cells, this DNA gets translated and transcripted and turned into spike protein. You're gonna generate antibodies that are gonna neutralize this binding. So the spike protein can't bind to ACE2R as we discussed previously. You can see that in the chimpanzee literature that not only did we generate antibodies towards SARS-CoV-2, but we also generated T cells. So Moderna is using mRNA vaccines to vaccinate against SARS-CoV-2. They work in a similar manner, except it's not actually an infection. The mRNA vaccine is delivered to our cells via a lipid nanoparticle. You need lipid because our cell membranes are basically lipid. So lipid will diffuse across lipid and get into the inside of our cells. Once it gets in, the mRNA is translated into the spike protein. The spike protein again is recognized as foreign and our immune system directs antibodies and T cells directed at that spike protein. So I'm confident that these concepts will work. Are there side effects and is there worry and concern? Of course there's worry and concern. There is a side effect called antibody dependent enhancement. In other words, once you create antibodies, it's possible that you enhance the ability of a certain virus to get inside your cell. Does it happen very often? No, and that's something that we look at. Now there's no mRNA vaccine that is out on the market. When you use mRNA as a vaccine, it is possible that your body recognizes RNA as foreign, which can trigger an autoimmune disease. So these are things that scientists know, which mean that these are things that we're looking at and looking for. 
So when you think about vaccines, everybody worries about mutations, right? Everybody's like, oh, the virus is mutating. Oh, the virus is doing this. Here's the thing about coronavirus. Although it's a huge genome, right? It's about 30,000 kilobases of RNA. It doesn't mutate all that much. The flu virus mutates four times more than coronavirus. And the reason you get the influenza vaccine every single year is because the flu virus changes the way it looks every single year. The analogy I like to use is this. When you're influenza, say you're a human being. One year, the human being might be purple. The next year, the human being might be green. That's what influenza does to evade the immune system. We call that antigenic drift. Coronaviruses don't seem to be doing that. Not at all. So when you actually create a vaccine, you may actually eliminate SARS-CoV-2 period, which is something that's exciting. And it's one of the reasons why people are racing to produce this vaccine. Whenever we think about vaccines, they have to go through a normal pathway of approval. That normal pathway of approval we call clinical trials and clinical trials have phases. Phase zero. What you want to know with a phase zero is you're only going to give the vaccine to a few people and you want to know how is it processed? What's the response? Once we get to phase one, we're testing for safety again. So you're gonna increase the dose little by little to see what people can tolerate until you have side effects and until you have an optimal dose. After that is proved as being safe, you move to phase two. At phase two, you're increasing to maybe 100 patients or so. And at that point in time, you're looking at efficacy. Does the vaccine work? Does it generate an immune response? And you're looking at safety. Once that happens, which is where we are with the vaccine trials for SARS-CoV-2 right now, you're gonna move on to phase three. Now, a phase three trial is usually double blind and randomized, meaning patients don't know if they got the vaccine or not, clinicians don't know if they got the vaccine or not, and they're studied over time. Now, sometimes phase three trials can take years. For obvious reasons, we have accelerated that in SARS-CoV-2 trials just because of the virus being so lethal across the entire world. After a medicine or a vaccine is approved on phase three, you go to phase four, which is long-term data. But after phase three, the medicine can be given to anyone. The medicine is now proved to be safe and has proved to be efficacious and in a randomized placebo-controlled double-blind trial, it's proved to be effective. So it's better than placebo. That's where we are or where we hope to be with SARS-CoV-2. China's looking to give their vaccine to their soldiers, I believe by the end of this year. So we'll get into that, but understand that the SARS-CoV-2 vaccine is necessary to create extinction of this virus. My expectation, I don't expect the vaccine to be available until sometime next summer or maybe several months after that, but I'm hoping that we can get this developed and get this through as quickly as possible to save a number of people and their loved ones. Thanks for joining Medicine Deconstructed. I really appreciate you guys watching today. Please stay tuned for next Tuesday's episode. Hit that subscribe button, hit that notification button, and I'm sure I'll see you on future Tuesdays. Thanks for joining.